What is the attribute of fraction? Uh, uh, we also received some questions about this. And this is a very important uh, question. Of course, uh, uh, many people think uh, every single cancer occurring among survivors are caused by radiation. That is not the case. Now, for cancers, excuse me, leukemias, what we can tell is about one half of leukemias occurring among survivors are indeed caused by radiation. But the other half are caused by other factors, other environmental carcinogens. The cancer story is different. About 10% is caused by radiation. 90% caused by some other factors, right? Smoking, dietary factors, and other, like occupational factors, something like that. But this, you know, uh, what we call attributed fraction differs by radiation dose received. If somebody received large amount of radiation, like two to four gray, story is totally different, uh, about 60% we can tell are caused by radiation. But those receive small amount of radiation, like 0.1 to 0.2, about 8%. So uh, attribute of fraction differs by radiation dose. But many cancers occurring among survivors are caused by other factors. So uh, you better be careful. Don't smoke. Stop smoking. <laughs> Be careful about your lifestyle. Then you see physical checkup regularly. By doing that, you can you know uh, prevent cancers or detect cancers very in very early stage, and you'll be safe. Uh, now, next one is uh, attribute of fraction differs by cancer site. Uh, breast cancer is quite radiogenic, and. Uh, uh, almost, you know, uh, see one third of breast cancers uh, are caused by radiation. <coughs> uh, stomach cancer, small proportion of stomach cancer is caused by radiation. Temporal pattern, we observe the excess uh, in early, you know, uh, years after the, the bombing, so two uh, excess started about two years after the bombing picked up, eight, nine years, and then gradually. Uh, decreasing, but not disappeared yet. Uh, for cancers, uh, excess started to rise uh, somewhat later, like 10 to 15 years after the bombing, and still rising even today. Now, diseases other than cancer, uh, we know there are diseases caused by radiation, which includes cataracts and parathyroid disease, we call hyperparathyroidism. It's a parathyroid a benign tumor causing hyperfunction of that gland. And also we know there are several diseases uh, we see uh, increase, both in incidence and mortality associated with radiation exposure. Those include stroke, heart disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, thyroid benign tumors, uh, liver disease, and uterine myoma. And uh, association tends to be observed at higher doses than uh, in cases uh, for cancer. And uh, recently we see some changes in immunity and inflammation as well. But we are not quite sure these are caused by radiation or not. Some other factors may be confounded, and we need further studies to confirm that. And also, uh, you can easily understand uh, there are psychological consequences, uh, but uh, it's unlikely to be caused by radiation itself. Uh, atomic bomb experience is the one most likely causing psychological uh, consequences. Now, these are the things uh, we uh, we identified uh, uh, amongst the atomic bomb survivors. <laughs> Uh, cancer of specific organs have increased among survivors. Uh, Non-cancer diseases, like cataract, benign tumor, heart disease, stroke, have also increased among survivors exposed to high dose of radiation. 
and uh, I talked about some, you know, abnormal, I mean, <coughs> some change in the immune system and some change in inflammatory uh, reactions. But this is the take-home message. Uh, health effects, both physical and psychological, persist for more than 60 years after the bombings. This is a very important message, and please remember this. Uh, effects in second generation. Uh, there are uh, several studies conducted in the past, including fast uh, uh, defects, growth and development of the sex ratio, chromosome change in the lymphocyte, uh, protein characteristics. Uh, all studies did not show any uh, effects of, uh, I mean, heritable effects. And we are doing a mortality study and cancer instance studies uh, among offspring. And again, up to date, we have not observed any increase in instance of cancers or uh, mortality both by cancers or non cancer diseases. Uh, we have just completed studies on chronic diseases uh, or lifestyle related disease, but again, uh, we have not observed any evidence thus far. But that doesn't mean there's no effect. Uh, second generation is still, you know, young. Uh, average age is 50s, or perhaps younger than that. So uh, they are now approaching to disease-prone ages. So uh, we might uh, see some, you know, findings in the future if there is. Okay, let's skip this one. Uh, collaboration. Uh, we have been doing international action contribution. Uh, for the health of uh, all mankind. And uh, 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 the reason for that is uh, among the investigations providing the basis for radiation protection standards worldwide, the atomic bomb survival study is the most long standing and extensive ever undertaken. Uh, there are many areas uh, our data can be utilized. Uh, for instance, uh, can be utilized for establishing standards for radiation workers, uh, standards for the public. Uh, probability of causation assessment of a wide variety of circumstances, assessing the impact of accidents like general accident, uh, assessing the risks to the public for environmental exposures, and, and several other things. Uh, now, uh, the international organi organizations utilizing our data include the uh, United, United Nations Scientific Committee, uh, or uh, National Academy of Sciences, uh, National Research Council Committee on the, the Biological Effects of Ionizing Radiation. Uh, those uh, two major international organizations are summarizing the effects of radiation. And by utilizing the information summarized by ANSCAR and FAIR Committee, uh, ICRP, International Commission of Radiological Protection, uh, uh, decides or, or you know, recommends uh, uh, standards for protection of radiation. Now uh, we are also providing training opportunity. In this case, you know, I'm talking about short-term training opportunity for those uh, who would like to know the methods of long-term follow-up or methods of data analysis or those who want to know what indeed is the health effects of atomic bomb radiation. Uh, we are doing this. Uh, I'll be providing uh, opportunity of short-term training. Uh, uh, you know, the collaboration with uh, uh, Hiroshima International Council for Healthcare of the Radiation Exposed and uh, Nashim, uh, Nagasaki has similar uh, organization, it's a hiking, Nagasaki Association for the Dangerous Medical Care. Okay, uh, future direction. Uh, I cannot <laughs> stop my talk without uh, uh, expressing my thanks to the survivors. Uh, our study. I think you know showing great success, but the clue of success, uh, the most important one is uh, we are able to obtain tremendous cooperation uh, from atomic bomb survivors. Uh, two years ago, when we celebrated, excuse me, oh, two years ago, uh, our 60th anniversary, uh, I did a talk at the National Academy of Sciences, Washington DC, and. Uh, uh, about uh, six months later, uh, National Academy of Sciences published this uh, uh, article in In Focus, and they, they said this unprecedented success is due to the steadfast leadership, uh, de dedicated employees, and loyal study participants of the Radiation Health Research Foundation, it's called CESA, the Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission. 
Now, atomic bombings left some legacy to us. Uh, obviously, provided us an opportunity and also responsibility to uh, contribute to the welfare of the survivors, uh, understand and quantify the effects, and provide a basis for radiation protection. And uh, uh, these are continuing goals of uh, important work that needs to be done. Uh, we have to maintain high standards in order to fulfill scientific and social obligations. I think I'm running out of my time and to stop here. Thank you very much for your attention.